I've been asked to close this panel with a brief discussion of where we stand now in, in our organization's work in Asia um, and where we go from here. Uh, I'll just give sort of an anecdotal approach, but I think it's one that captures this idea of we can do it if we bring these minds together. You've seen them now. They're there. Helga's intent in beginning these conferences, of which this is the sixth. We've had two in Germany, one in New York, one in Washington, one in San Francisco, and now this one in Los Angeles, uh, on the, the, the theme of a paradigm shift required for mankind. Her underlying conception of this was that we must bring these leading ideas and the leading figures who represent these ideas in dispersed parts of the world, especially the US and Asia, but also from Latin America, Africa, and and Europe, bring these unique minds together, not to have a dialogue, not to talk, but to implement LaRouche's ideas. Those who recognize that that is the leadership of the future of mankind. And without this leadership, we, we simply won't make it. And I think you get a sense by seeing these people from across Asia, from hearing some of the people presenting it here, that this is possible if we act on it. Now, I want to use the example of Mr. Kotagawa, whose message I read to you from Japan this morning, and a few related things, just to give a sense of where we are going now. We have this tremendous momentum with Russia, China, and India. Uh, Mr. Kotagawa, who is often described by people, I I'll mention that as a result of Helga's effort to make these connections, we have been introducing our friends to each other. Uh, in these different parts of the world. And they, in turn, then introduce us to some of their friends. And this is the way that this network is beginning to expand very, very rapidly, by the way, of leading figures, leading minds, in government, out of government, but leading minds, people who are thinking about the fate of mankind as being on edge at this point. Um, and many of the people that I've introduced Mr. Kodagawa to, from Korea, from from uh, Thailand, they say he's a very un-Japanese Japanese. <laughs> I think why they say that is not because he's really un-Japanese, but because he's a, a citizen of the world. And uh, most of you know that uh, Schiller, uh, Friedrich Schiller, after whom our conferences are, are named, our institution is named, always insisted that each of us must be both a patriot of our nation and a citizen of the world. And I think Kodagawa uh, represents exactly that character. Uh, and uh, a couple of examples. Uh, when I introduced him to, or, well, let me say, it's this concept which is essential if we're going to overcome the kind of contrived animosities between nations. This is the, 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 the bread and butter of the British Empire, finding religious differences, ethnic differences, territorial conflicts, and getting people to fight each other over this kind of minor, petty garbage, rather than working together. Uh, and of course, the big one on that is keeping the US and China at loggerheads, and the US and Russia at loggerheads, near war, in order to not allow them to work together to replace this decrepit, bankrupt empire and end war forever as a means of politics. So when we introduced um, uh, Mr. Kotagawa to Pak Ditanapura from Thailand, he immediately clicked on this idea of the Kra Canal. He immediately, because as you, as you heard, he's a leading economist, Ministry of Finance, IMF, friends in Brazil, friends in China, friends in Russia. He knew how to do it. He said, aha, okay, here's what we do. We get China and we get Japan, both of whom with, with absolutely need this Kra Canal, to, as governments, work together with the government in Thailand, to create a special unit which would issue credits guaranteed by these governments and therefore very low interest, long-term credits, which private interests can get engaged in. We create this bonding capacity and build the thing. That's what we do. Let's do it. And he had a second point which I think is, is also very coherent with Mr. LaRouche's thinking. He said, more important than that, we will get Japan and China to work together on something which is of great benefit to both and overcome this ridiculous conflict that is constantly being reborn by the imperial interests. The current one, as you probably have heard, is that there's three rocks in the, South, in the East China Sea, the Sengaku Islands or the Diaoyu Islands, the Chinese call it, 
and they're battling and you're blaming each other and so forth. So when, when we discussed with Mr. Kotagawa the idea of peaceful nuclear explosions to blow up the tunnel, to make the tunnel through southern Thailand, he said, I know what to do with peaceful nuclear explosions. Let's blow up the Senkaku Islands. <laughs> so, I, you know, this is, this is creative thinking. Um, and uh, it, 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 we're, as Pak Di mentioned, he'd just been in China, he's just been in South Korea. We can get other nations engaged in this process. And of course, this is exactly what the United States should be engaged in, and we're not. Um, the, uh, the other thing to, to, to say, in addition to what Laney laid out quite powerfully about this tremendous development in China, the high-speed rail, the, the North-South Water Project that Mr. Chang developed, this idea of we can do it, we can achieve this, something that you know, used to be common in our country and which is totally lost since the, since the assassination of Kennedy and the, the advent of this green thinking, this anti-science, anti-human thinking. But when you look at nuclear power, if you, do, if you see a map, which we did a few years ago, of the world, and you put in those areas that have given up on nuclear power in black and those nations that are forging ahead with nuclear power and scientific development in red, <laughs> the East is red. <laughs> All of Asia is moving ahead with nuclear power, while the United States hasn't built one in God knows how long. Uh, Germany has, you know, the Greens have taken over. They're completely shutting down their nuclear capacity. And across Asia, this is taking place. Korea, which once was one of the poorest nations on Earth, not long ago, 50 years ago, and under powerful leadership of Park Chung-hee, who was a close friend of Kennedy's, by the way, transformed that nation using American system methods, methods that were also used in Japan since the Meiji Restoration to build Japan into a modern industrial power. And they are now not only building nuclear plants in Korea, 30% dependent on nuclear, but they're exporting, building them all over the world. They're already building several in the UAE. Japan, where, as I'm sure you know, they have shut down their entire nuclear industry, 50-some nuclear plants, because of the Fukushima uh, accident during the tsunami. And those of you who haven't discussed this before, just let me mention, nobody died at Fukushima. No one. No one died from that terrible accident, and it was a terrible accident. The cleanup is extremely difficult, but it's the safest energy form that's known to mankind, nuclear power. No one died from the worst accident. Right? This, is, this is the reality. So unfortunately, Japan was under a green government at the time, and they took advantage of this to completely shut it down. But Japan will open up those nuclear plants. The Abe government today is committed to doing so after the first of the year. And Japan just signed a contract with Turkey to build nuclear power plants in Turkey. So this is moving ahead. Thailand, as you heard from Pakti, they're moving on a nuclear power plant. Vietnam is already building nuclear power plants with Russian help and they want to get a Japanese plant. Fusion. Our fusion budget here, we won't go into it, but it's been decimated. I mean, we were the leaders in fusion. It's been destroyed. There's still shadows of our fusion project. And we're working on the ITAR project in France, which is an important project, but which has been slow in getting moving. Japan, Korea, China all have advanced nuclear fusion programs. We have interviewed the Marsha Freeman of our 21st Century Science and Technology Journal, which you can also find on, the, on, the, on our website, uh, has interviewed the heads of all three of these projects. And I encourage you to put put in nuclear fusion in the Asian countries and read these interviews at the EIR website. This is, this is what's driving people in Asia. They believe in this idea of progress in economics, in, in uh, science and technology, and in culture. And on the cultural side, let me just add, I mentioned before that Pakti's wife has created and runs this opera company in, in Thailand and in India. Uh, not surprisingly, Mr. Kotagawa turns out to be a patron of the classic arts. Uh, and when our close friend, uh, Lin Yen, uh, she's, has she been in the West Coast? Yes, she was. She was at San Francisco, right? I don't think she spoke, though. But she's spoken at some of our other conferences in New York and in Washington, I believe. This is a, a, a Chinese woman here who's very close to a, a very skilled Chinese pianist, a Tian Zhang who have done a series of concerts in New York, which Laney's been involved in, which 
to show bringing elementary school and junior high school students into Carnegie Hall to listen to not a children's concert, but an, a Beethoven, Chopin, Brahms concert on piano, re demanding concentration, and absolutely refuting the myth that children can't be brought to appreciate beauty today, that all they want to hear is the boom, 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 and the perverted crap. You know, that's all they get, yes, but if you give them beauty, there's a human mind in there, despite the effort to crush that human mind. So they've demonstrated this, and they want to take the 256 campaign, I won't go into it here, but we have for many, many years fought to lower the tuning uh, down to C256 from the now elevated fake tuning. We want to bring it down to what's called scientific tuning for reasons that are clinically scientific as well as uh, cultural in nature. Uh, they want to take that campaign, and we'll be, we're performing here at 256, the concerts in New York were at 256, and they want to take this concert, not just the beautiful music, but the scientific tuning that underlies the great composers, to China. So they approached Mr. Kodagawa, who said, okay, I know what to do. I have a friend in Shanghai who's a patron of the arts. Meet with him. He'll set you in motion in, to work with the people in Shanghai that have the cultural festival. Get this thing going. Set up a series of lectures on Kepler, on Bach, on the nature of music and science. And this is now underway. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in the spring. Uh, and then he said, then we can bring it into Japan. It's a bit more difficult in Japan. China's wide open to things right now. Get it going there, and then I'll figure out how to bring this into Japan. But this is, this is a cultural renaissance and a scientific renaissance. And we are at the center of this. The, uh, our ability to do this is essential. We need Asia. There's no question. I think you see that from today. But they also need us. They know that if this country uh, descends into a global fascist hell, carrying out wars all over the world, killing its own people, that no one's going to survive. Asia's not going to survive as an island. It won't work. They can't. This is evil. This country, if, if it goes in that direction, is capable of more evil than Hitler ever dreamed of. And yet we have the potential of contributing not only to help the Asians in this way, but contributing the tremendous tradition of science, uh, culture, and, and uh, of the fight for the freedom of the human mind, the dignity of the human race, uh, in a way which is absolutely essential. So they're calling on us, they need us to do this, and they're calling on us, those of us in this room, who have to take that as their personal responsibility. We owe it to mankind. That's our task. Okay, thanks.